This is a revision video for Lord of the Flies, uh, looking at the themes within the novel for the English Literature GCSE exam. Okay, what's it all about? Well, going back to the meaning, the central message within a text from which we can uh, link all of our analysis to. Uh, I think that this novel is an exploration of the nature of evil in humankind um, and how evil develops in in man and uh, well in in humankind. So the themes that are uh, covered. There's the themes of law and order. There's this idea of civilization versus savagery. There's this idea of the loss of innocence and the nature of evil. So starting with law and order, uh, we see there are lots of rules. Uh, throughout the novel that are created and they are shown to be necessary to create order um, on the island um, and rules are shown to be necessary in society um, for a society to uh, to uh, function properly and to be civilized uh, as, as well as order they are also seen by some of the characters to provide authority in my characters video I talked about how Jack uses rules in order to provide him with authority. At first, the boys, they're willing to accept the rules uh, because of this conditioning of society. They're used to it, like hands up in class. Uh, the conch represents, you know, the, the hands up. In fact, one of the boys says, you know, oh, it'd be like hands up. Um, so they are perfectly willing to accept these rules at the beginning. The conch, the, the big shell that is um, used by Ralph, uh, he blows into it and all the boys come. This is used in the meetings and, um, to, uh, to signify that someone can speak, so you can only speak when you're holding the conch, and this becomes a symbol for law and order in the novel. Now rules are seen as the vestiges of the civilized world, in other words something that is left over from the civilized world. Um, however, whilst they are necessary to create uh, and sustain order on the island, they are also quite restrictive and they restrict the personal freedoms um, of the characters. All of the rules at some point in the novel get broken and they lose their significance um, as the novel progresses and this is in the, the famous quote from Jack that everyone seems to remember for some reason, bollocks to the rules. And he was one of the characters at the start who uh, said, no, let's have lots of rules. Um, and as the novel progresses, they lose significance. And uh, this is an integral part of the regression of the boys. In other words, them going back uh, into this savage state. Speaking of which, we move on to the, the conflict between civilization, the civilized world, and savagery. At first, the boys behave exactly as they would at home. And as I said in the previous slide, they're willing to accept the rules because they're just used to it. Um, they respond to their initial uh, to their situation initially with this British tenacity, this stiff upper lip. You're right, we'll just get on with it. It's like a boy boy's own adventure of the of the um uh, 30s and 40s, this idea that um, it, it, it's going to be an adventure and with a little pluck and spirit they will just get on with things and uh, they'll be, be able to survive. However, as the rules are broken, as they disobey uh, rules, they start, this leads to this gradual regression. A regression is when you go backwards. They are going back in this in uh, uh, from their civilized state, their ordered state, their structured state um, into something that is a bit more primitive and primal. This is shown through their clothing and cleanliness. The, um, their hair grows longer, their, their, they, their uniform falls to bits, they stop using the uh, designated areas for uh, to go to the loo, um, so all of this kind of breaks down and their civilized behavior um, is kind of described as, as I said in terms of conditioning this idea that these rules have been enforced from the beginning and they've just they just used to it which is why they were used to it and they responded well at the start but then as this wasn't being enforced with the, the power of a civilized society 
um, that conditioning lost its um, it kind of reverts back to that more primitive state and this regression it brings out a more brutal more violent and instinctual behavior and I think instinctual is the is the word there that their 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 cruelty and, and Golding presents their the brutality as being quite instinctual um, in the boys which leads on to this point the savagery is presented as being innate in other words something that is always there something that is always within them and as I said this is the, the nature of hum, um, evil in humankind the breakdown of law and order leads to a regression into savagery so we see how the previous theme I looked at leads into this uh, theme and with that regression into savagery that's going to lead on to the next theme um, that I look at but it brings out this kind of savage nature that was already in them and with that of course we, we see that as being evil so the next theme the loss of innocence um, the life on the island they, they, they start off as boys all of them are boys obviously but even the more mature student um, boys on the island I think they're about 10 11 maybe 12 at, at the oldest I think Ralph is the oldest but you know he's going around pretending he's an airplane at the start he's standing on his head um, he thinks that his dad is just going to rescue him. his dad who's an officer in the island. oh yes we're going to get rescued um, however life on the island they have to mature pretty quickly um, parallel parallel to uh, their regression um, is their loss of innocence so as they regress into this savage nature they lose their child uh, childhood innocence this loss of innocence it seemed to be seemed to be a natural process okay it's going backwards it's regressing but it, it's shown as, as being natural it's it's what would happen to all of us if we were left to our own devices and we see um, uh, children and, and you know, we see people kind of turn feral when they are um, removed from society for whatever reason they're isolated from society um, and they, they turn into feral creatures um, effectively and essentially, Golding clearly um, points out that this all stems down from the break of law and order. Nearly everything can be um, directly linked to a breakdown of law and order, a breakdown of the rules upon the island. So, the nature of evil then. With the breakdown of order, civilization, and innocence, this brings out again an innate evil within the boys something that was always there and it's, it's rather interesting you know it's, you kind of think well um, you know what made Hitler Hitler he was a, a you know he was a, a child just as we've all been child you know uh, and there was something in him that led to that kind of you know there's something in his psychosis um, something in his own fear and um, that has brought something out you know what makes murderers mur you know serial killers um, uh, and you know th people that do despicable acts um, what brings that out within them this is another point evil is shown to exist in everyone even Ralph and Piggy they get brought drawn into and they are part of that um, attack on Simon that leads to his death yes it was a, mis a mistake from all from all of the boys they didn't realize it was Simon um, that they were attacking but um, it, it, it was brought out this savage primal nature and we see that clearly in all of the characters it's presented as an inherent weakness um, the it's called at one point that you know the beast that is represented in, in my symbols um, uh, video the the uh, style and technique video for Lord of the Flies I'll talk about how um, the beast represents evil and, and the beast is referred to as the the essential illness of mankind in other words it's something that will will always bring that evil in society will break us down um, and there is a direct correlation between the breakdown of order and the acts of evil so if we if we look at the beast and and the conch the conch represents order the beast represents the evil within as the conch loses its significance you'll notice the beast 
rises in significance as the as the novel progresses. Now, rather interestingly, Golding kind of uh, puts forward this idea that morality, so a sense of good and uh, and evil, is actually imposed upon society rather than being a natural expression. It's something that is conditioned into us because of um, uh, the rules we know from uh, from toddler group when we snatch a toy off off someone or, or someone snatches a toy of us and we respond by hitting them back that kind of instinctual nature um, uh, we are we get told off and we, we said that that is bad we'll get put in the naughty corner and we learn right if I do that I am going to get punished and therefore um, the the idea of um, good and evil and morality is imposed upon us rather than um, something that we do naturally and that for me is um, quite a frightening prospect and that's why many people think that Lord of the Flies is an incredibly frightening uh, novel I'm one of those people uh, because you know it, it shows us for what we are um, and that, that last point on the slide there morality is imposed by society so I'm good just because I've been conditioned to be good um, that's rather frightening.